So that's what that uh, that's what that entire subsystem performs is to allow you the the USB to uh, to serial programming route and for the the serial input output that you get through the serial console in the IDE. Right, because the, the USB the USB communication is going to be far more intense than just the serial communication, right? I mean, you, there's just so much going on with USB yes. communication. It's not some simple, you know, it, it it's it's pretty in depth, which is why you have to have some type of bridge. And this is a little bit. Here's a weird. I don't know if this is a weird question, or not Dan, but okay, you had mentioned that there are some chips that we had previously talked about that specifically serve the purpose of being a bridge between USB and serial. Right. Do those chips require programming or no? They're, do you know? Okay, no, so they're just like- Baked into the silicon. It's baked into the silicon designed to do that. But with this, they actually had to write code to do that that conversion from USB to serial. Okay, man, yeah. that's so fascinating. Now, I, yeah, I, I would doubt that there is a sort of a default library or a default functionality for the AT Mega 16 that just, hey, you you write the firmware that says turn this feature on and suddenly it turns itself into USB bridge. Right, right. What it does is it offers USB input and it offers serial output. And then it's up to you to write the firmware to do that. Gotcha. Uh, so down here, you can see we've got USB VCC. We've got data negative, data positive and, and USB ground. This is where the USB comes in from the USB connector. Wouldn't want to put the USB connector anywhere there or mention that this is actually, you know, actually runs out to a connector. I guess we just sort of assume that. Um, and then over here, we have the, the serial input and output or serial receive and serial transmit. And then these are the serial LEDs. So they've got something in their firmware that says anytime that you send data out on transmit, make the transmit LED blink. Anytime you receive data on the receive pin, make the receive LED blink. That's all within the firmware. That's not a default functionality. Okay, gotcha. I really do like that feature though. I gotta say, I love being able to see, like the blink, the blinking LED is such a good indicator that I'm actually uploading code like I thought I would. Yeah. Um, it's subtle, you know, but I find it pretty helpful. It does the same thing, I'm not mistaken, when you're sending data back via the serial uh, you know, the serial interface, like if you had yeah. to send, I think it also does a quick blink.